on this 65th anniversary of uh, Pastor Kyle's ordination to the Office of the Holy Ministry, uh, we wish to ask him a few questions about his life and pastorate uh, in an informal way, get to know him a little bit, as well as thank God for um, the ministry of pastors who bring us the gospel of Jesus. Um, some of the questions will be a, maybe a little silly, but uh, <laughs> we'll, we'll do our best here. Um, did you ever sleep through your alarm clock or make it late to church? No, I honestly, in the 40 years of active ministry, um, never slept. I think I, uh, well, you were married quite, uh, quite soon, you know, uh, a, a month before your ordination, right? Correct. And uh, so having your wife there certainly would have, would have assisted with that and, and kids and, as well. I think I had heard a story about well, your daughter being born on a Saturday or something like that. Sunday. It was a Sunday. Okay. Yep. So um, wrong day for a preacher's kid. Yeah. Was was that in the afternoon or was it in the? <laughs> yeah. yeah. Well, thankfully, thankfully you could preach that morning. Oh, I did. Yes. Yeah. <clears throat> Excellent. Um, did you ever conduct services in German or preach in the German language? Yes. Was that a regular part of your ministry? Um, um, <clears throat> Not a regular, you know, could have been uh, twice a year type, okay. type thing. Special special services and yeah. occasions. Yeah. 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 Uh, if you were called to the Midwest, it might have been a more active part, but being on the East Coast in your ministry, I'm sure there were a lot of, plenty of English speaking people. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yes. Um, what was your favorite hymnal to work with as a pastor? You know, we have our our hymnal battles, as it were, those who swear by certain hymnals. And the Lutheran hymnal, the old red hymnal, some knew it as blue as well, uh, came out in 1941. Then in your ministry, too, the Lutheran worship came out, and uh, more recently, the Lutheran service book. Um, different hymnals, any thoughts in that regard? Uh, not really. I like the old Lutheran hymnal, yeah. the one in 41. Yeah. Um, which, you know, had hymns that, uh, oh, that reminds me, I have um, my ordination bulletin. Oh, well, excellent. I'd like to see that. In fact, we'll, uh, we'll publish it for, uh, for everyone to, to see. Uh, we'll, sit, we'll copy it and send it out. That people... They spelled my name wrong. The PH rather than the yeah. F, yes. Yeah, we're <laughs> off with a PH. Yeah. Oh. Too bad. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Rudolph with a PH is the reindeer. Rudolph with an F is you, right? Correct. Yeah, exactly. Um, teaching or preaching, did you have a preference? Uh, I, I love to preach and uh, <clears throat> did not have a preference. I enjoyed uh, writing. Uh, I enjoyed uh, being creative, mm -hmm. um, did some really odd stuff, uh, mm -hmm. which... Um, it was the 1970s, right? And 60s, right? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> For part of your ministry, yeah. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> did you normally preach with a manuscript or without a manuscript or from an outline, from memory? Um, I usually, my dad said to me, writing makes the exact person. Okay. And so um, I would write um, my sermons sure. or type them, sure. one or the other. Uh, <clears throat> but um, I believed in, in uh, using a manuscript. Um, I um, preached at times um, for, from memory um, without notes or a manuscript. Sure. Uh, what was your uh, favorite festival of the church here, Christmas, Easter? Did you have a preference between those two holidays or another holiday? Well, I, Easter for me, uh, without Easter, the, the, you know, 
I know Christmas is important and etc. Right. Yeah. But uh, uh, for me, Easter was the key. Yes. Uh, without the resurrection of our Lord Jesus, uh, there is no hope or life. Um, your favorite book of the Bible, I know that uh, one of the things that's been mentioned about your work is uh, much of the teaching that you did and the centrality of teaching and adult teaching in your work. Um, did you have a favorite book of the Bible personally or a favorite book to teach? Uh, I always enjoyed Romans. Um, In fact, uh, I, uh, in seminary, I would write papers on, on, on uh, right. Romans, especially on uh, Decaiosine, uh, righteousness, um, uh, which I <clears throat> love very much. That and the, the Book of Psalms. Uh, and if you were to ask me, you know, for a favorite psalm, it would depend on how I felt. Sure, sure. Yeah. Uh, have many favorite psalms. Yes. Would you say that the psalms were a part of your, your teaching as a pastor or more your just personal piety and prayer life? Uh, most my prayer life and um, uh, piety. Yeah. Uh, as far as the Psalms uh, were concerned. Um, and that's why, I, as I mentioned, why I, I like using the same Psalm for seven days. Uh, and I don't know how many times I have been through that daily office. Sure. But, uh, Part of your regular diet. Yep. Yes. As one pastor once said, I like oatmeal every morning for breakfast. Don't change my breakfast on me. I don't need any novelty. Um, do you have a favorite hymn? I know that's, that's difficult. Or a section of hymns in the hymnal uh, that, you, that you like? Um, again, the Easter hymns uh, are uh, very precious to me. And... Uh, And some are not in the hymnal, right? On, you know, uh, the Lutheran service book. Yes. Now you went to prep school at Concordia Bronxville at fourteen years of age. Correct. Um, so you <laughs> left. You left uh, home and where your father was pastoring. Um, what was it like to uh, leave home and prepare for ministry at that young age? Um, in our present situation, the Missouri Synod individuals don't do that that early. Um, at that particular point in my life, I did not know whether I wanted to be uh, in ministry. Okay. Um, my grandfather, you know, was active in, in ministry, and my dad, um, <clears throat> well, you know that history. Uh, the pictures are behind you. Yes, the, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, we'll share those with the viewers. I think we already have. Um, then what was it that um, made the decision for you that um, a life of service to the church and the pastoral office was Probably was what you uh, on my vicarage year. Um, I vicared in, at Trinity in Hicksville, New York, <clears throat> in a uh, very large parish had about 1,600 uh, members. Um, Levitt had built Levitt Town in uh, Westbury, uh, Long Island, <coughs> which was a neighboring community from uh, Hicksville. So we had an awful lot of uh, people from uh, Levitt Town. Right. Um, and I think it was um, on, on, in my vicarage uh, with Ed Stammel, um, whom you either uh, loved 
or hate it. Um, and I had both emotions uh, with, uh, with Ed Stammel. Um, I remember, because he moved to Florida, and um, I remember um, my dad's 50th uh, anniversary of ordination. I preached for my dad, and uh, uh, Ed Stammel was there and welcomed me as a... <laughs> hmm. um, I'm sure your family was pleased. Your father and grandfather were pleased when they heard the news that you were, you were going to continue on in the family, family <laughs> business, as they yeah. say. Um, if you didn't become a pastor, what other things did you have interest in? Um, I uh, always liked, uh, quote, marketing. Um, I uh, worked in many jobs. Uh, I was a, a night chef at wow. Howard Johnson. Um, <laughs> And uh, a lot of people don't know that uh, I worked myself through part of college. And um, as a magician. Oh, that's a first. <laughs> Magic by Rudon. Yep. Yeah. Rudolf Kyle, magician. Yes. I didn't know that. Um, Are you still uh, accepting uh, calls for that? You know, no, not really. Okay, uh, I still have a lot of stuff. Okay, um, you know, right. magic and uh, um, I am. If 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 there's anything that uh, I keep up is is card magic. Mm. Uh, because everybody has a deck of cards. Right, and, right. Excellent. Well, we're glad you went into the pastoral ministry. Yeah. <laughs> um, what did you do when your children were misbehaving in the pew? Did you ever have a situation uh, where your children were misbehaving? Um, probably, but Barbara uh, was a extremely strict mother and you know would march the three kids yeah. um, into either the first pew or mm -hmm. <laughs> oh. and it was usually the pulpit side so that they would be under my nose yes. as well yes and, uh, how did you meet Barbara uh, she was a member of my dad's uh, congregation and um, was the president of the Walther League. That was the youth group um, in my growing up. <clears throat> and um, she um, asked me to drive a load of kids to Palisades Amusement Park as part of her youth ministry. Right. And uh, I said, well, I'll do it if you're my date. Right. And she said, no, you know. Uh, and I said, you want a, a carload of kids? Um, that's, you know, it's either you're my date uh, or I don't try. Uh, whatever, five sure. kids. Yeah. And uh, so she agreed, and uh, obviously uh, I dropped all the kids off on the way home, and Barbara was the last right. uh, person. But that's how uh, we met and started to, uh, quote, date. Um, you've mentioned... Uh that she was a great help to uh, you and your ministry. What qualities did she bring as a pastor wife, a pastor's wife, to um, to your work 
as a pastor? Um, she was an educator, uh, went to Patterson State University, uh, well, it was called Patterson State Teachers College. Mm -hmm. And uh, so her degree is in education and uh, um, so she, you know, became um, part of, always part of the education ministry. Um, and I felt that adult education was the key to um, my ministry. Um, to the point that in every church that I served, uh, we built educational wings mm -hmm. or, or buildings. Uh, and Barbara was always a part of that. Uh, as an educator, and uh, she was a, she ended up as a, um, uh, I teasingly would call her a bookie. Uh, she was a, a bookkeeper uh, at Woolworths. Mm -hmm. And uh, that was her <clears throat> last uh, employment, sure, to put it that way. What was your favorite potluck dish at a Lutheran potluck? Oh, <laughs> uh, that's hard to say. Do, do they have, I mean, on the East Coast, do they have potlucks like oh, in yeah. the Midwest? Oh, okay. yeah. 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 In um, the Midwest, it's always the, you know, the jello salads that are, I don't know if those made it out here on the East Coast. Oh, yes. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Sure. And um, I hate to think of uh, how many I attended <laughs> in 40 years, uh, you know. Sure. Oh, boy. Had you ever tallied up the number of baptisms or confirmations that you had conducted over your ministry? No, I had yeah. not. Uh, what was the hardest thing about pastoral ministry? I almost hesitate to say a death. Mm -hmm. But uh, <clears throat> working with... Um, people and sometimes watching them die and had the experience of uh, some real horrible uh, tragedies of, 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 of death. Um, I remember, you know, a 26-year-old uh, 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 who was killed And, uh, you know, to, to work with the, the family was, was uh, not, not easy. Right. Uh, well, you know. But, uh, you know, then to offer them in the funeral service the gifts of the Lord and also with the committal um, services and... Uh, I found as a pastor that those liturgies are bringing people great comfort. Yep. Uh, and I, you know, believed in, in uh, having funeral services in the church. Um, I would fight uh, many times uh, and lost. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, because they, the, the funeral home is, is all right, but uh, it's not the church. Right. And <laughs> I don't know how you feel about that. I had the church's preference. Um, and in my uh, 17 years of ministry, I've had an opportunity at times where <laughs> someone in the nursing home or someone um, um, that may be facing dementia, we'll, we'll talk about wanting to get back to church. 
And uh, I'd always say to them, you know, we'll get you back at least one more time. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and I could keep that promise, right? Yeah. Yeah. So, um, yeah, I agree with that. Um, that the people are surrounded with the signs of life, the cross, the place where the person worshipped. Yeah. And, you know, the um, the histories of the burial, too, where, um, you know, there is a custom where the casket is placed, you know, not, not parallel to the altar, but actually um, perpendicular to the altar so right. that it is as if that person would be standing up and worshiping one last time with the worshiping sure. congregation. Sure. And uh, so it, it's, it's where it should be. And um, the music. Right. I mean, in a funeral home, seldom is there music. Right. But. Uh, yeah, uh, they want to pipe it over the loudspeakers and uh, or play it on a CD. And I remember recently having a situation where I asked them about, you know, it was like some country singer was going to sing How Great Thou Art. And I said, well, is it all the stanzas? And they, they assured me that it was. But of course they left out the stanzas about Jesus, you know, <laughs> and left the stanzas in about nature. So right. uh, in the end, you don't you don't get the comfort of, and when I think that God, his son not sparing, sent him to die, I scarce can take it in, that on the cross his burden gladly bearing, right? But that, they didn't sing that one, you know? <laughs> um, so in the church, you can control things a little bit better. Um, uh, did you have any, I'm sure there are many people over the years that you had the opportunity to pastor to, or that you met as a pastor, um, or that you had the opportunity to, to interact with. Um, can you remember any particular individuals that were maybe quite interesting to pastor or to, um, to meet as a pastor uh, in your 65 years? <laughs> That's a tough one. Um, well, you know, I, I served a, um, uh, both a military parish and um, got to know um, some people who were um, not quite admirals, mm -hmm. but uh, pretty close. I mean, they were captains, uh, which is a full bird colonel in any other of the um, disciplines, the military disciplines. And um, um, that by itself was uh, pretty fascinating. Your, um, your ministry, you know, you had mentioned something about uh, serving military bases and men and women. Um, also, you were near Camp Pioneer, so it involved uh, that sort of work. Um, in addition, campus ministry <laughs> and planting churches in your role as um, as uh, assisting the district with uh, evangelism and mission outreach. But uh, back to the, the military um, uh, portion of your service, um, I had heard that you actually got out on a submarine? Oh, yes. Okay. Yeah, I was on the James K. Polk which was an FBM, a fleet ballistic missile boat. Right. Um, we had uh, 16 nuclear weapons on board. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, the uh, chief weapons officer was a member of my parish. And he fired, we, we were submerged. He fired all 16 um, missiles um, and I remember saying to him would you have a conscience problem with you and the commanding officer uh, the captain of, of the uh, boat of activating because once you activated one you fired all 16 because they had different targets. Um, and I said, would you have any problems knowing that millions of people would die uh, with just one submarine? And um, he said, no, because Groton, Connecticut would not be there. 
to come home to because it was a prime target uh, for, at that point, the Soviet Union, which, because this was during the Cold War. Right. And, uh, Your wife in the submarine? Pardon? Your wife in the submarine? You wanted her to go out? Did I hear that correctly? But Barbara never got on the submarine? Oh, uh, she was, it took me four years to get her on a submarine it was a fast attack boat, uh, and it was in dry dock, mm -hmm. <laughs> so it wasn't even in the water. Right. <laughs> and um, while we were on board, there was a um, and, uh, and uh, all the whistles went off and. Uh, uh, it was the only time that she had ever been on a submarine. Sure. Excellent. <laughs> um, what were your proudest moments as a pastor? My what? Proudest moments. Hmm. Well, Easter was always, for me, uh, a, a, a super day. I mean, that... My proudest moment. Um, it's hard to it's hard to say, you know, just to come up with. Uh, I always enjoyed Easter, and uh, reading through your biography too, um, you had built several education wings, right? Um, <laughs> which was you know a part of your work, as well as you had several congregations that were on district stipend. Right. And you were able through uh, the Lord's blessing and hard work to get them self-sufficient. Correct. Which is an accomplishment. Well, I don't know. There, there were two out of the four right. congregations that uh, I moved from free money to... Uh, <laughs> Lots of money. <laughs> yes. Well... Um, once they experienced uh, the freedom that comes with being self-sufficient, um, they wondered why it took them so long. Yes. And finally, uh, what would you want people to remember about your 65 years of pastoral ministry? The Maybe. word. Uh, in everything I did, uh, God would get the glory uh, in Christ. Um, without that, you know, there's nothing. Uh, I look at that crucifix on the wall. Uh, that was given to me uh, by a TWA pilot. Uh, he bought it at a free a flea market in Paris, France, uh, and uh, on my uh, vicarage, he gave that to me, and uh, so that's. The history of that uh, crucifix. And, uh, we thank you for your time and for um, for the blessing that God worked through you um, these many years. And um, I know as a as a pastor now of seventeen years, my first ministry, that first year of ministry, was quite difficult. Mm -hmm. um, what you experience at the seminary, you know, maybe akin to um, it's the enjoyment of studying God's word, but it's a lot diff more difficult when you get into the trenches. Yep. And um, much of that striving and wrestling was with, with myself, not with God's people. Um, and it was about uh, misunderstandings or false notions that I had about the pastoral office or about what, what the people would be like 
Um, you know, John the Baptist, the Bible says, he preached a message of repentance, right? Um, he says, repent for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Well, you know, I just thought that I would go out there and tell people to repent and, <laughs> you know, you'd have flocks of people, you yeah, know, right. coming to the waters of baptism. Little did I understand that that was a synopsis of his preaching. <laughs> and after all, he did lose his life, didn't he? Yep. Um, but I do remember my first year of min ministry sitting in my office and saying um, that I wanted desperately not to be a pastor anymore. Um, and what got me through my first year was um, my grandparents, because I knew how disappointed they would be <laughs> if I gave it up, right? Well, I, uh, twice in my ministry, um, I had the urge to run, to leave uh, ordained ministry. And uh, both times my, my dad uh, came through and uh, uh, probably kept me in, in uh, ordained ministry. Yeah. Um, that speaks to the blessing of other pastors. Yep. I mean, that you wouldn't be here today were it not for the Word of God and for His gifts through the church, which you speak about, you know, every day, confessing your faith in the Apostles' Creed in that third article. And in that third article, you talk about God's gifts to the church. You know, all these things include a good wife and family, and uh, you wouldn't be here. And your brother pastors, which encouraged you, including your father, who was a pastor as well, right. and that heritage of faith that you're given. Yeah. So as you say, you know, today is a day, yes, it, finally to give glory to the Lord. Yeah. Well, you know, God gets all the credit. Um, I, I am just a servant. And uh, a doulos. The, the slave. Yeah. In conclusion, uh, we thank you for your work for these 65 years, for your encouragement to other brother pastors. We want to especially thank your family. Um, we understand that, you know, like Hannah gave her son Samuel to the uh, work of the office and would only see him once a year. So there's sacrifices involved with the family mm -hmm. that that has a father who's a pastor or a husband who's a pastor or a relative who's a pastor and we want to thank your family for also giving you to the church and uh, we pray that the Lord would continue to bless you as you carry out your life of faith um, that the feast that you regularly received in this life that is the Eucharist the Thanksgiving mm -hmm. uh, would uh, at the Lord's right time um, be transferred over to the from the feast here to the feast in heaven. So may God bless and keep you always in his grace.